there were four draws in round seven of the candidates tournament, but there was some great fighting chess, including this game, Magnus Carlsen against Tamor Radyabov. So far, Radyabov has been having a bit of a rough tournament, but I think this game shows that, uh, well, he can mix with the best in the world. E4 from Carlsen and Sicilian. Now, instead of playing the open Sicilian with d4 and so on, Carlsen played bishop b5. Now, this is a very popular move and uh, a very dangerous move indeed. Basically, white seeks to get castled very, very quickly. And you'll notice that black hasn't developed any of his kingside pieces yet. So very often, white manages to catch black's king in the center or at least cause problems for the black king. E6 from Rodiobov. Now, this is a, a favorite move of his in, in this position. You might remember this was played in um, Anand against Gelfand in their World Championship match last year. And Carlsen played in exactly the same way as Anand with b3. So this is already an unbalanced position. You can see that white has given up the two bishops, but black has a slightly damaged pawn structure. Um, Maybe it's no coincidence that Anand's second during that World Championship match was Peter Heine Nielsen, Danish Grandmaster, and he is now uh, the second for Magnus Carlsen in this tournament. So I can imagine they've been uh, some ideas have been passed over. In that Anand Gelfand match, Gelfand played e5, which is a very sharp move indeed. Um, instead, Radyabov played d6. Now, he has played this on several occasions before, so you know, he seems to really know what he's doing. Uh, most of Radyabov's opponents have played e5 in this position, which can lead to some very sharp battles indeed. Um, but Carlsen preferred, instead of e5, just castling here. Now, if black plays e5 here, now, this is the kind of pawn structure that black wants to play because it, it clamps white in the middle of the board, prevents white from breaking with d4, for example, and can start to set up a kind of kingside attack with knight g6, bishop e7, and castles on the kingside, and so on. But in that case, white would play c3, followed by d4, and break up black's center very, very quickly. So let's go back. So... Radyabov played knight e7. Okay, it's a normal move. So you want to play knight g6 and only then e5 and bishop e7. And, well, it's, it's more stable in that way once you've got your knight out. So Carlsen played the standard move here, which is e5, which breaks up black's pawns on the queen side. Black has a choice here. You can, well, Radyabov played knight g6. You can also play d5, or you can also take on e5. I don't like taking on e5. Now, it, it brings the knight to a very good square, and black can't go on a, a wild adventure with the queen, or it's inadvisable. You can take the rook, but suddenly you can see the, the queen is trapped, and after this, well, either the black king is going to be in trouble, or the queen is going to be in trouble with, with one of these moves. Okay, let's go back. Now, the alternative d5. Now, this is possible. Now, this, but, but somehow this is desirable for white. This leads to positions that are very, very similar to the, to the Nimzo Indian defense. If I go right back to the very beginning, this is the Nimzo Indian defense with black. And now here, e3 is the standard move. But very often you get this kind of pawn structure and then black seeks to play against the pawn on c4 with these moves attacking c4 you can see that that pawn on c4 can't be defended by another pawn now if we compare and contrast with this position you'll see that with with colors reversed this is very similar indeed so this is the whole idea behind playing e5 it's to undermine the support to the pawn on c5. So black's structure is actually in trouble here. Radyabov played knight to g6. Best move. So 
Carlson takes on d6 and knight c3. So white has a very clear idea here, and that is to attack the pawn on e5 with usually by playing the bishop to a3, knight to a4, sometimes to e4 as well. So black has to try and generate play on the other side of the board. And Radyabov does this with e5. So in compensation for this weak pawn on c5, black has the two bishops. That pawn has opened up the, the diagonal for the bishop here. And also a, a quite an imposing pawn centre. And this is an extremely double-edged position. So here we go. Radyabov starts to steam down with his pawns on the king side. And Carlsen goes to attack the pawn on c5, which Radyabov defends for the time being. And now c4 from Carlsen. Now, the point of this is to, well, it's partly to fix this pawn. This is no, never going anywhere now. But also to take away the d5 square from the bishop. Carlsen would very much have liked to have played, to have played queen d2, perhaps with the idea of, well, either queen c3 or queen a5 or queen e3 to attack the pawn on c5. But it's just not possible in this position because of bishop d5 hitting this knight. And suddenly you can see that, well, let's have a look at this. Um, this, this shatters the pawns, even in this kind of endgame. You can see that, that black has a huge attack on the king. Uh, the rook can come round here. So c4, I think, was necessary to prevent this move, bishop d5. But of course, it does slightly weaken that pawn. So Radyabov hit that sensitive spot straight away or indirectly with, the, with rook to d8. Queen e2 from Carlsen. He's still persisting with this plan of playing the queen to e3. But this is highly provocative because it, it means that, that black can actually move forward with tempo. And this does give the e4 square away, but, well, I mean, it, it's very complicated. It, it means that this bishop, the line for the bishop has opened up, and maybe for the rook as well. Now, Radyabov played a kind of waiting move here with king h8. You could play rook f5 straight away, but king h8 is very interesting. Um, and here, well, taking on c6, not advisable. That would shatter the pawns on the king's side. Uh, after the game, Carlsen thought he should have played h3 when he said, well, it's kind of a, he said it's n a normal game, he described it as. I mean, there's no doubt that black would have some attack here. You play rook h5 and, you know, maybe you can possibly threaten sacrifices here or maybe move the knight to h4. I mean, it's a very double-edged position indeed. Instead, Carson played rook d1, which he was very dissatisfied with after the game. Um, I'm not sure it's that bad. Um, it would be very interesting to see what would happen if Carlson had taken on c6. I think maybe black's best is to play something like this. He could take the exchange, but I think it's more dangerous to keep the bishop on g4. And, well, black has a huge attack here. It's in practice. I think this would be very difficult for for white to defend. Perhaps if you're a computer, you can defend this, but um, this is highly dangerous. Carlson played rook d2, which also isn't really satisfactory. So Radyabov took here and played knight h4, and this is a very difficult position. Okay, let's let's have a look at what the basic idea is. Um, if white takes on c6, you can play f3. And queen e6. So this is a very, very standard mating pattern, of course. So that's what Carlson has to defend against. Now he could play queen g4. That blocks these this diagonal for, for, for the queen. But still, this gives black an absolutely huge attack here. Uh, I think in practice this would be very, very difficult for white to defend against. So Carlson chose queen e4. So this allows this attack. The knight comes in, it looks like a very odd square, but basically that knight controls some important squares and actually prepares the way for the queen to come to h3. And then the knight moves and then queen g2 mate. There was a very simple way to play this position actually. 
Radyalov could have just taken the exchange and played bishop c7. It seems to me this is a very simple and direct way for black to play and just to bring the bishop here, that's a, that's a very awkward position from white's viewpoint and then you know maybe to attack the pawn d3 and in combination with the pawn on f3 i think black might just be winning that position that might be the simplest way for radyabov to play but understandably he continued playing for the attack carlson has to give up the exchange here to defend against queen h3 so if queen h3 now you can just take off that pawn on f3 and there's no harm done so radyabov took and well, queen takes allows queen h3 and mate, so pawn takes. And now, well, Radyabov felt that the best way was to, to open up the position with f2 check. Maybe it's better to play more slowly with bishop e7 to open up the line of the rook here. Now, if the, if the knight blockades on f2, things perhaps aren't so bad for white, but the queen comes to h3. And both players thought after the game that black should just play slowly and just play this position even if white takes this pawn off that's going to open up the diagonal for the bishop and and also the e-file for the rook and it just feels as though this position is is just too much for white okay but radiobo felt that intuitively that this was the best way to play to open up white's king now maybe it is a good idea if you play queen h3 here and it seems that if the king goes back here, then this is a far more dangerous way to play the position because th these pawns are vulnerable and the king can be vulnerable too. And if queen h1, as similar to how Carson played in the game, then this is also very dangerous. And it seems as though white can't hold his position together there there's too much to defend here well you can see straight away that d3 is dropping but the difference is in the game radiobov checked first and now he'd only examined king g1 and this is indeed very dangerous after this wonderful clearance sacrifice so if knight takes then queen h1 is uh, deadly but carlson played the king to e2 now this holds his central pawns and after this now a remarkable move queen after queen h3 by the way if you play queen f6 then queen g2 defends and if the knight comes to e4 this is key if the knight gets to e4 to defend everything then white should be all right here radiaba was looking at this but that knight does a superb job of defending and and the king as well this is actually a very solid unit and for example, queen takes a2, queen c6, white is solid here. Radyabov tried queen h3, but queen h1, an excellent move. And now the knight comes to e4. And I think at this moment, Carlsen kind of breathed a sigh of relief. He was also moving very, very quickly as ever. And that put pressure on Radyabov, who was running very short of time here. And here, Radyabov started repeating the position and it's clear he's he's gone wrong h5 well not a bad idea to try and force things open with h4 but carlson just played bishop b2 and once this bishop comes into the game here well i think black even has to be careful so at this point radyabov just repeated the position um after the game carlson was asked well did you consider playing for a win here with king king e1 but even thought even he thought that was chancing his arm a bit um you know given that the the, the queen is on h1 and, and the king somehow is a little bit loose now and these pawns are a bit loose there's too much so instead carlson acquiesced to the draw and they repeated moves and there we have it a draw so carlson defended by the skin of his teeth but Again, he showed that when he's under pressure, he finds kind of the only way to continue and, yeah, made it as difficult as possible for his opponent. Thanks for watching.